Hey guys, welcome to our video about lenses. A lot of you guys have asked, what kind of lens should I get? What kind of lenses do you have? How does a lens work? I'm gonna answer all that and more in this video. So you can spend all the money you want on a good camera, but at the end of the day, your camera's only as good as the lens you're using because that's what's actually taking your image and putting it on the sensor or film if you're one of those old school type of people. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what makes a good lens and a little bit about the kind of lenses that we actually have. Lenses are built into every camera we use these days, so much so that you might not even think about what the purpose of a lens actually is. Because you can't just take a sensor and point it at the world. All you get is a big blur. You actually need to take the light and focus it to actually get a crisp image. That's how your eyes work, that's how cameras work. So the way a lens is built, it's not just one piece of glass, it's actually many pieces of glass because you have focus at different distances. Some lenses are zoom lenses, so you have the ability to change focal distance. Some lenses even have image stabilization, which actually removes vibration from the shot. So there's a lot of elements inside of a lens, and that's why they can get kind of expensive. With all those pieces of glass inside, the actual way the lens is built plays a very significant role in the quality of the lens. You want smooth, easy turns for smooth focus pulling and smooth zooming, should you have a zoom lens. So when you're picking out a range of lenses for your camera, basically there's three things you want to cover. You have wide angle lenses, mid range lenses, and telephoto lenses. What does that mean? You can get lenses that are wide angle lenses that let you see a very wide angle of your subject or the room or whatever it is that you're shooting. Much like your eyes, you can almost see 180 degrees with your eyeballs. Now telephoto lenses are the opposite of that. They seem to take the subject and put it really close to the viewer. Basically the lens is doing the same thing of taking your image and cropping it in until you have just a subject that might be far away, but they fill the frame. So basically a wide angle lens makes things seem far away a telephoto lens makes things seem close. You know those shots of like the moon or eagles? Those are shot with the telephoto lens because you can't get too close to a lion. And then there's also mid-range lenses which are not super wide and not super telephoto. And those are good like all around purpose lenses when you just have to kind of like run and gun and figure it out when you get there. Now there's also another type of lens called a prime lens. A prime lens does not have the ability to zoom. It's a simpler build and they can actually usually make better lenses for cheaper. You just lose the ability to customize on the spot what your framing is like you can with the zoom lens. A lens also has iris control. Many old lenses and many Nikon lenses have manual iris control where you can actually control the amount of light coming into the camera by opening and closing an iris inside the lens. But a lot of lenses like Canon lenses are actually electronically controlled for the iris. So you actually need a camera that can talk to the lens electronically and you adjust it with the camera. The better the lens and usually the more expensive the lens the more open this aperture can get to let in more light. Now, the aperture is measured with something called an f-stop, and it's a number, like f2.8, f5.6. What that means is it's a ratio between the focal length of the lens and how open the aperture is. Basically, this lens is a 15 millimeter lens, and the f-stop is a ratio to how much it opens up. So an f-stop of two is basically 50 divided by two. So if I have this open to f2, that means the aperture is 25 millimeters open on a 50 millimeter lens. So that's what those numbers mean. Now the thing is, engineers face a tricky issue with aperture. When you start to open the aperture more and more, and you start to use more and more of the glass and the lens, it gets really hard to keep the image crisp and sharp. So generally speaking, the better lenses can open further, but they also cost a lot more money because they need to use much more precise glass and much more precise mathematics to actually make the lens work. So these lenses open up to 2.8. On the other hand, a prime lens, because it's not a zoom lens and doesn't have all those fancy moving parts, it's easier to actually have the aperture open up further. So we have two prime lenses because our Scarlett camera is not that great in low light. This one opens up to 1.4 and this one opens up to 1.4. That's a lot more light than 2.8. So the next thing that makes a good lens is sharpness. Now you might think that all lenses are all sharp because most pictures just look sharp all the time. But that's not actually true, especially as you look towards the edge of a picture. Most lenses are sharp kind of in the center but as you get to the corners of your picture, you'll start to see things get blurry and distorted. Good lenses don't do that. Cheap lenses tend to do that. Now the thing is, you can get sharp images out of almost any type of lens by using a certain range of the f-stop because when you close down the aperture, it actually focuses light a little bit along with the glass. Now the range of about 5.6 to f11 is about the range where you get the sharpest image. When you go more open than that, the aperture doesn't influence the light at all and doesn't focus it. And when you go more close than that, the aperture actually is closed down so far, it actually starts to diffract light because of the edges of the iris bending light a little bit as it passes through. It's kind of crazy. You have a couple other things that dictate a good lens. The first thing to look for is chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is basically a kind of rainbow fringing you get on the edge of your uh, picture. 
Now, generally speaking, it's something you don't want. You want a crisp, clear picture all the way to the corners of your image. You don't want it to get all rainbowy and refracted at the edges. And the reason why that happens, because light in the rainbow has a different wavelength when it's down in the red versus when it's up in blue. And so a lens does not refract all light to the same degree. So red light becomes refracted a little bit, whereas blue might become refracted a little bit more. And that's why it starts to separate at the edges. So good lenses, through the use of coatings and various types of glass, are able to avoid this. Cheaper lenses start to show it. Now also, some cheap and old lenses out there tend to get a little bit of distortion where it actually like bulges in the center and it almost has like a pin cushion effect or pinched effect. Generally, it's not a huge issue, but if you're looking like on eBay or Craigslist for lenses, just keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. So one of the coolest features about modern lenses is image stabilization. Basically, inside the lens is a little gyroscope and computer that is keeping track of how you're moving and wobbling and vibrating. Because that's what we as human beings tend to do when we hold cameras. They actually take that little lens and they have it vibrate in the opposite direction. And it takes your image and stabilizes it onto the sensor. Now, for people like me and Sam who shoot handheld, that's a total lifesaver. It takes your shots that are all vibrating and shaky and makes them smooth. It's really cool. It feels like I'm in the future. So our two lenses here have image stabilization because these lenses, we can zoom in a bit. And as you zoom in, you start to exaggerate the shakiness of your handheld uh, abilities. A wide angle lens tends not to show uh, shakiness too much, so we don't have any image stabilization on this one. Hey, before I tell you guys what lenses you should have, let me tell you what it means when I read off all these numbers. All right, so usually I'll say the type of lens. This is a Tokina. What kind of mount does it have? It is a Canon mount, a Canon EF mount to be precise. So when I say this is a Tokina, 11 to 16, 2.8, I'm saying is it's Tokina lens, 11 to 16 millimeter zoom, 2.8 minimum aperture. Our main go-to lens, mid-range lens. This is a Canon, 17 to 55, 2.8. This is a Canon, 70 to 200, 2.8 with image stabilization. This is a sweet lens. <laughs> it's our most expensive lens. I would hate to drop it. Then over here we have two primes that give us better low light capabilities. This is a 50 millimeter 1.4. And over here we got the 24 millimeter 1.4. This is more for our wide angle shots that we need a lot of low light capabilities on where we can open up really far. By the way, there's a 50 millimeter out there that Canon makes that goes to 1.8. That's still pretty good and it's only a hundred bucks. If you guys are looking for a good prime lens, check it out. Also, a lot of you guys are saying, why are you guys using that crappy kit lens on your Scarlet? This isn't a crappy kit lens. We did our online research. This is a 1755 2.8. This is a great lens. Look it up. It's super sharp. Don't give us crap about our lenses. I like my lenses. <laughs> so at the end of the day, there's a lot of options out there with lenses, and they can be kind of expensive. But don't be discouraged. There's a lot of great used lenses that are out there. If you're looking for some good stuff, check out Craigslist, check out eBay. Try to do a little bit of research beforehand. Uh, websites like thedigitalpicture.com have awesome reviews with great photo comparisons. So you can actually see what each lens brings to the table and how they compare with each other. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Pick what works. Play with it. Don't be afraid to use bad lenses. They still give cool images. It's not the end of the world. Your cameras come and go, but your lenses stay. These lenses we will have for a very long time, and the quality of their picture will never change. Peace out.